Is there one thing that you can look at to tell AC or DC? And of course he's talking about motors. And this is a very common question. In fact, this is one I sympathize with because working with a lot of salvaged motors, I often don't know what I have until I get it on my workbench. With that being said, let's go to the workbench and I'll show you some tips on some ways that I usually try to figure out what kind of motor I have in front of me because that's the biggest hurdle. Once you cross that, then you can start figuring out how to wire it. All right, so I've gathered some motors here to try to help distinguish the different motor types. And as you can see, they can vary quite a bit in their appearance and how much information is available. Uh, for these three in particular, and even this one, they've got a label right on the motor. Hopefully you recognize some of these guys from the series, especially these two that I cut open for you. But uh, this guy right here is a 90 volt DCPM permanent magnet DC motor. So right away, just by looking at the label, you already know what this guy is. You're going to need uh, DC voltage. And the same for this one. Right here on the label, it says 12 volt DC. The red is positive and the black is negative. So you could literally just hook this up to a car battery and then you've got your motor is powered. This guy used to power the big blower fan for the AC unit in my van. You can see there's just two wires coming out of it. There's no label on it. I can look at the rotor and see that it's wound in there and if you look very carefully through here, not you but me, I can see that there are brushes rubbing against the commutator. So when you see that, when you see motor brushes like this and a commutator, then that tells you right away you're either looking at a universal motor or a DC motor. So how do I figure out if it's DC? Well, the universal motor always has a stator field that's an electromagnet like this. The interesting thing about the universal motor is it will run on both AC and DC. So you could have a motor whose design was for DC power, but it's still wound like this. But that's a topic that we'll save for another video. This motor here is just barely magnetic. This is one of the clues that I look for is if the body is magnetic, it's not very strong though as you can see, then that tells me that there are permanent magnets in the stator field and this will be a permanent magnet DC motor. This guy from the series, without having to take the motor apart, you could look at the label and see that this is a one quarter horsepower motor pH 1 which is for phase. Uh, this is a single phase motor and you see the Hertz 60. So those two right there immediately tell you that this is an induction motor. If you've got those two variables you could also look at the speed. If it's around 1700 or 1100 and something or 800 and something you are most likely looking at an induction motor. The other clue that you might be able to tell if you can look down into the body of your motor like this one I can look through that hole. I can't show you very well on camera, but I can tilt this and look inside and see that it's a squirrel cage rotor like this. So that's another clue that you're looking at an induction motor because there's no electrical connection to the rotor. And induction motors will be hooked up to AC. Many of them, not all of them, will require uh, a capacitor of some sort. So some of them even have two capacitors. They'll have a run capacitor and a start capacitor but that's outside of the scope of what I want to cover in this. And then you might have a motor like this where it looks like a squirrel cage rotor on the inside. There's no label on the outside and got all these wires sticking out of it. The rotor, the squirrel cage rotor tells me it's an induction motor, but since there's no label on it and I got all these extra wires, then I have a video series that helps you identify what these wires are. And that's in the how to wire a motor revised and that video is in the description. But it turns out that two of these wires, these two, actually go to a capacitor. The capacitor is missing in this case. I'd have to buy a capacitor and add it to it. But after doing some investigation, you could figure out that two of these need a capacitor and two of these will go uh, to your AC supply and then this is your ground wire right there. So this is a single phase induction motor. And I happen to know because I've actually fired it up that it, it's a two-pole motor. It runs at 3600 RPM. This guy is the last one I want to show you. This is a three-phase motor. Again, looking at the label, we've got a couple clues. The speed lets me know it's very likely that it's a four-pole induction motor. 
And but there's nothing about phase over here where it says phase there's a blank there's no number actually stamped there. Another clue it says phase one, phase two, and phase three with colors next to them. And so looking at all these wires coming out of it I've got these two blue wires it says blue thermo sensors and then these other wires which actually are for the three phase power supply. So this is a three phase induction motor. While I'm here, I remember that somebody asked about the various meters and tools that I use. So I thought I'd make a quick comparison for you. Here is a multimeter that I bought at Harbor Freight. I think I paid about $60 for it. This measures everything that I need and it's auto ranging. The only issue I have with it is occasionally it doesn't turn on, which, you know, I bought it at Harbor Freight, so I'm not totally disappointed. But uh, other than the fact that it occasionally just won't turn on randomly, it's been a pretty good multimeter. And the main reason I wanted this is because of all the settings over here, but I can measure continuity, I can measure capacitance, and these are things that I wanted to be able to check. And then there's one more added feature that really is only good for teaching in my case, and that's it'll measure hertz. And if you've been following this series, you saw me use that function where I could show you that the line frequency here was 60 hertz. But other than that, I haven't really had much of a use for that. This guy I bought specifically for the series because <laughs> I wanted one that was more reliable. I wanted it to turn on every time without having to worry about if something was going on. So I bought this guy. So far, it's worked good. I've only been using it for about a month or so. It measures everything that this measures except for uh, it doesn't measure capacitance and it doesn't measure hertz uh, or line frequency. But I don't need those functions really, and most people don't, in my opinion. So uh, the capacitance measurement I use occasionally when I have a capacitor and the label has been stripped off. I might use that to identify it, but other than that, again, it's a function that is not used very often. So this one seems to do everything that I need, and uh, in particular, I like the fact that I can measure continuity, which is something I talk about in how to wire a motor. And then over here, it has a load tester for different battery settings. I bought this on Amazon for like 20 bucks, and then when I went to create a link for you guys so that you could get one if you want it, the price has gone down. It's uh, like $17 now, so I've only had this for a couple of months, but so far it has worked really well, and I've been happy with it, so this is what I will recommend, mostly because the price is so good, the reviews are really good, and I've had a, a decent experience with it for the limited time that I've had it. Links to this in the description. This tachometer I also bought on Amazon and it's been pretty good. Basically it works. You just need a piece of reflective tape. It comes with a little strip of it, which I am almost out of. And I just cut off a little piece, stick it to whatever I want to measure, and then you can push the test button and measure your speed. So this little tool has been really useful for checking the speed on motors. And after I have, especially when I make pulleys, just to confirm that I've made the groove the right size and I'm actually getting the right ratio of speed that I want it. Now, there are many other videos that go into great detail about how to use a multimeter. So I'm gonna encourage you to search YouTube for videos on that. Now, I know that was kind of fast. The best thing about it is you can watch this over and over and there are hundreds of resources online. It's a combination of my videos, you searching online, and even watching other videos and the resources that I've got in the description you ought to be able to figure out what kind of motor you have.